I know, it's, it's, it's funny. <laughs> okay, so the question that I've been starting off with everybody is still, I mean, it's, it's like very open-ended. Yeah. If you want to talk about art making during this process, yeah. you can. That's kind of where my interest is coming from, but you don't mm -hmm. have to if that's not something that's been affected by it. But um, um, are there any moments that stick out as moments of radical change for you? Oh, man. The <laughs> radical change question. The radical change question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I feel like there's been so many, um, just in the past year, because it's mm -hmm. my first year of my master's, and so you can't help but be affected by that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> I feel you there. I'm kind of like learning the game, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> it's kind of funny to think that there's strategy to grad school, and that there's roles that yeah. no one tells you until oh, like, you figure it out, and... <laughs> And that's kind of what I've been figuring out um, since it's the end of my first year. Um, radical change. Hmm. I try not to like prepare for this because I'm like, I, you, you know, just be better. <laughs> well, we're honest or something. But, this um, is this is like kind of the the quote from the reading that I pulled that I you know people yeah. who aren't in the class what I shared with them when I've asked them to do this is that um, radical change in our lives occurs when the methods of our time worn practices checked and rechecked are unable to account for a growing accumulation of instances and questions to the contrary. Growing accumulation of instances. Yeah. Yeah. Because we talked about it, you know, being a big like moment in class. Yeah. And do you think is it a big moment? I, I think it can be, but I don't think it has to be. <laughs> I don't think it has to be. Um, I think. Um, so in my first year, um, we had a master seminar class, mm -hmm. and a lot of it was uh, looking at our influences and inspirations, and kind of trying to digest that and dissect it and figure out you know why are we making what we're making and what's important to us mm -hmm. and um so i guess that was kind of exploring like an accumulation of instances <laughs> um oh, that's I interesting think, yeah way to think about it yeah i mean that you have to kind of actively force yourself into that it really i mean it really is i think you know, in undergrad, or you know, I came straight from undergrad, mm -hmm. so I, I kind of think academic in, in an academic timeline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, in my undergrad, you know, it's about learning processes, and you're kind of just like forced into these concepts in a way. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, you have to learn how to, you know, do this with wood, or do this with metal, or do this with casting, and, and try to make some concepts. So you're like forcing these concepts out of you. And then, in in grad school, you're like, oh, gosh, why am I making this? This is supposed to mean something to me. <laughs> you're like, this, um, so, um, and I think that, you know, really brings you, forces you to look back. And one thing that is, will always be just like a constant drive, driving force in my life is my childhood, which I, which, you know, that's like for, Pretty much everybody you're affected by your childhood mm -hmm. but I had a, a unique um, raising I grew up on a on a houseboat what? <laughs> yeah. I know curveball <laughs> what? Um, that's awesome so um, my um, my family so my parents before my sister and I were born I just have one sibling uh, they raised sailboats and then whenever we were born, we continued to um, sail like every weekend. We were wow. any spare moment. We were on the water. I think I I thought I was a sea creature or something, but <laughs> like my whole childhood. <laughs> but um, and and then whenever I was seven years old, my sister is two years older than me. Um, my dad sat us down at the dinner table. We were very traditional, you know, went to church every Sunday and had dinner together every every um, every evening. So this wasn't abnormal for us to all be together for dinner. Um, but then he kind of announces to us that, okay, children, <laughs> we're gonna move on to a boat. And um, and you know we were excited. We were like, we don't really know like the finance financial consequences of moving on to a boat and selling all your belongings and whatever. So <laughs> we're like, yeah, that sounds like fun. Like, 
they can be on the boat all the time. <laughs> and then um, we sell all of our things because the boat is only 43 feet long. I don't know how many square feet, but it's really Can't small. Be much. <laughs> I mean, it's like a lot smaller than this room. <laughs> I mean, as far as like living space. Um, and I remember my mom, my mom told me, and I don't remember a lot of this, my mom told me, and I really wasn't upset at, like, getting rid of all of my mm -hmm. things and my toys. And she was like, the only thing, like, that I wanted to keep was my Polly Pocket. And it was, like, this really small. Yeah, they're, like, I know, they're, that like, big. Like, <laughs> the dolls are, like, smaller than my pinky nail. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, I think that decision... <laughs> And um, experiencing life on, on a boat has really affected my life choices mm. and um, the way that I choose to organize my life and make decisions. So, um, and yeah, and it, it's weird because like, it doesn't really seem that significant to me, like in my everyday mm -hmm. kind of you know, going through life, like, oh, I lived on a boat, cool, like, that happened, <laughs> but, um, I don't know, I guess, like, really reflecting on that, it kind of has changed a lot of my, my decisions and in, in my art, mm -hmm. although it's really strange because my sister, <laughs> you know how siblings grow up in, like, the same but environment, but then they're complete opposites? Oh, uh, yeah, no, I know that. It's, she didn't, yes. like, acquire these things that I acquired from... <laughs> Living on a boat, so I then I like wonder like, gosh, is it really even from this experience or, I don't know, like it. I mean, I'm sure to a degree it was I called mean, it, like you know has to be. your personality responding to that experience. Yeah. So um, my work, a lot of it um, has been about um, how we put value on objects and what makes something to be considered precious, you know? Um, right. So, you know, kind of throwing function into that as well mm -hmm. and, and time invested processes and where that gives value. Um, and, God, it's funny because I feel like my brain is like scrambled eggs. <laughs> it's like, no, it makes sense. But, um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's like an accumulation of kind of, you know, that, that event happened, mm -hmm. and now it's been like an accumulation of awareness, like, yeah. at certain points yeah. of how it's affected my work. Um, it's funny because a lot of the, like, I, I just had this show in North Carolina, and a lot of them are... Um, you know, about time invested processes, mm -hmm. like precious objects in the home. Um, and even though, like, it's about something, it's about value, <laughs> I remember driving there and I, I transported all my sculptures with oh, me wow. and, and drawings. Yeah. And I remember driving there and I'm like, what kind of sculpt sculptor am I? Everything fits in my trunk of my Honda Civic. <laughs> like, that is really small. Is it even one of the hatchback Civic? No. That's not even a hatchback Civic. No, it's just, <laughs> it's just because, like, everything either collapses or mm. rolls up or folds down or, you know, some type of, it's, like, in, ingrained in my brain, like, everything has to be able to travel with me. <laughs> like, you know, those aren't really things I was, I wasn't making those decisions <laughs> whenever I made them, mm -hmm. <laughs> or whenever I was making them, like, mm -hmm. oh, I need to travel with this, but it always happens. And if it is big, they, there's some way to take it apart. Mm -hmm. There's Reassemble. something. So, <clears throat> and I don't know if that contradicts kind of the concepts <laughs> that that are in the work or or not. But um, or maybe that does make them precious because I they are the does. things that travel with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fact you know, that you a, can a, a doily you can place in a drawer or roll up with your clothes. Mm -hmm. and, that's kind of one of the, the icons that are in, in my work is the doily kind of as a an icon of the decorative as some at the beautiful something that covers up 
something else. Um, yeah, I remember seeing your yeah your big the big piece, paper yeah, the, the big paper, paper cut, cut piece. pieces. Yeah, I, I just yeah. roll that piece up. You just roll it up. <laughs> <laughs> I but, just roll. but it does have an amazing ability to kind of expand. Yeah. You know, it is yeah. it, it is tiny and it, you can take it with you, but mm-hmm. it, you, you can also it really it has a presence yeah. when when you do install it. Mm-hmm. So that kind of mediation of mm-hmm. s- like the sturdiness of it to be able to to go from those from from being small and rolled up to being yeah. on the wall is really interesting. Yeah. But that's part of the process of the work. And whenever that. you put something that fragile on the wall, I mean, especially with this piece that we're talking about, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> it uh, it just it shows all of its vulnerability whenever it's on the wall. Like, um, there was a man that walked into the show while we were installing, kind of. You could tell he was gonna. He was there to like cause trouble or something. <laughs> and he, 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 he like walks up to me and he's like do you have anything to do with this? Or, you know, what's going on here? You know, like, people are, you really take offense to things. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like, um, and I, I think, and he was like, you know, why, why is this, this thing on the wall? Why do I feel like I'm walking through a spider web or something? You know, like, he felt, like, offended by the way it made him feel. Like, it had, like, this, I mean, yeah, I, I think it has, like, this haunting, kind of creepy, mm-hmm presence to it you know and he, it was just funny that he or not funny but just interesting like this was an of, offensive feeling to him <laughs> like that there and I think it was partly um <clears throat> having to do with kind of the feminist nature mm-hmm. of the work that was that was in the in the show and um and he was offended by many things and I guess that's kind of exciting <laughs> yeah, it's an artist. You want people to respond in yeah. some way, shape, or form. Yeah, and he um, he was like, you know, I don't understand why you women, which is funny that he says you, you women. women. Um, and he's a he's he's a uh, I don't know a middle aged black male mm-hmm. with his he had his child with him, mm-hmm. and they were just kind of going through. And um, it's like I don't know why you women uh, think feel the need or want to keep talking about this like you know like he's like I I cook dinner for my my wife and my family you know every night we share our responsibilities and (laughs) and I you know he's really taking offense because he feels like you know this has already this problem that these women keep complaining about is is already solved you know, and I'm, like, thinking, like, how can I make this relevant for this man? Like, mm-hmm. I know, you know, he was a part of the conversation in his generation where that was relevant, and maybe now it's not. But I'm, like, how do I, how do I relate? How do I, I don't know. I was kind of, like, scrambling, like, okay, like, yeah, you know, that's, like, this, you know, you have the waves of feminism and mm-hmm. whatever. And, like, yeah, I understand, like, you relate. I'm not saying this to him, but, like, I'm thinking, like, I understand yeah, how you relate you to this second wave, and, you know, maybe this is third wave or something else, or, I don't know, but, I don't know, I don't know, it's just funny, like, just the vulnerability of it and how it, people are, just can get so affected by that, but. I don't know. That's kind of going on a tangent, but that's no. I it mean, was, but it was fun. It was interesting. That is really that happened. Really interesting, but it's like you know, he probably was feeling just as vulnerable <laughs> as you were in that yeah. moment. You know. Yeah. I think that's one of the the negotiations that has to to happen. Yeah, I it is. I mean, I I would I would say that's true. I mean, whenever I was making it, I think the work my work is kind of ambiguous looking. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's also because I'm. I'm kind of skeptical of it <laughs> in the making, mm-hmm. you know? Like, you make things to kind of discover something you don't already know, right? Mm-hmm. It's like research. That's what research means. Um, and I'd say I'm, like, still skeptical. You know, what does it mean whenever you um, invest so much time into something? You know, what? how does that make something precious? Is it mm-hmm. precious? What is it really doing? Is it necessary? Um, should we be talking about this? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm, I, I'm still skeptical. So, like, seeing that piece 
does have like a certain amount of vulnerability in the in the process of it for mm -hmm. me. Is that something that you've kind of that that has come along with going to graduate school and something or, I've come like with. like this this awareness of like your own process and yeah. your reaction to your own work is that something that totally has been a result of yeah um, you know I recognize that you know I enjoy time invested processes mm -hmm. why you know I mean why is craft important you know and and kind of. You know, we just had like this Regina Rex show mm -hmm. and where, you know, this kind of quick and witty <clears throat> casual aesthetic is is really hot and sexy, and, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and, totally, um, yeah, no, I totally know what you're talking about. <laughs> and, then, and then like reflecting on my own process, you know, what's valid, you know, about, about craft? And do I, do I believe in it? Do I believe in this casual aesthetic? I don't know. <laughs> Um, so that, that's kind of where I'm at right now is trying to think like what is meaningful to me and do I need to let go of certain things um, to, to let in a more broader conversation um, and, I, and I've kind of been like mixing, up, mixing it up in my studio like trying out the things that maybe I don't agree with to see what if I try it and I do, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's something that, that kind of gives me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I can <imagine. laughs> To give it a chance, you know? Like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll take some of both. Some of both. I'm, I'm not really sure at this point. I'm, I'm in my first year, so I'm in, like, that place of question. Right. And, and like, experimenting. I'd letting love, things in that I wouldn't usually. <laughs> I'd love to ask you the same question in like two years. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. I might hold on to this project for a while after this class, just you know, for my own purpose. Yeah. As, I feel like a time lapse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> come back. You know, talk to more people and come back and talk to people again mm -hmm. because I do. I totally agree that like coming to grad school is a moment of change where, mm -hmm. like, I think that the process has been initiated, mm -hmm. like, right now. Like, I'm going, I feel like I'm going through this sets of questions and yeah. everything. Yeah. I don't really know yeah. where I'm going to be at the end of this experience, but I feel like that's where I am now. What year are you? I'm in my first year, too. Is it a three-year? It's two a two-year year program, okay. so by the end yeah. of next year, I guess I'll be through it. But, yeah. you know, even in just the first year, I feel like there are, like, these little things about myself and about yeah. what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and who I'm doing it with that I've just kind of totally. kind of to my brain and made me think yeah. <laughs> differently, you know, about myself and what I want to do. It's weird, like, I mean, remember I say, like, the graduate program is like this game and like this strategy yeah. that you learn like you're learning like the rules to the game mm -hmm. but there is like a certain natural progression of it that mm -hmm. everyone goes through and uh my learning curve yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> my best friend evie she's a um she does alternative photography and mm -hmm. she's going through her master's program in boston and it's a two-year program oh yeah so it's funny, like, talking to her about what she's going through mm -hmm. and, like, the whole kind of, like, trajectory of it. Right. Um, and when she's going at a different speed, because you have this different end goal. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because at first, you know, we're kind of going through the same thing. Right, so trying to get your feet like, under you. Yeah, and, like, these feelings of, you know, pressure, anxiety, mm -hmm. like, excitement all at the same time. But, and then now that, you know, she's at the, we're both at the end of our first year, but instead of two years, she only has one left. Yeah. <clears throat> so now, like, our trajectory is starting to um, misalign, mm -hmm. you know? So, but, it, but it's interesting because, you know, I, I think now that I kind of have a grip of what's going on. <laughs> yeah, finally. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I can see, like, we can kind of see, like, where we are in this timeline. Mm -hmm. And because, like, she has, like, this expected end date. Mm-hmm she is naturally falling into these certain um, <laughs> alignment, you mm -hmm. know? Like, but it's, I don't know, it's funny how it feels so unnatural, but maybe it is kind of, kind of naturally happens. I don't know. Maybe? <laughs> maybe? I don't know. 
<laughs> no, but I, I do agree because I feel like all the second year master's students just feel like, like they seemed like they had everything figured out. The when second I got, year yeah, student, everything? Yeah. yeah, they had like everything figured out and, you know, yeah. I'm finally getting to the place where I'm like, okay, I kind of know what I'm doing and I kind of know what mm-hmm. to expect. And, you know, it reminds me of undergrad where I spent the first three years thinking, oh my God, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> Why does everyone else have this figured out and I don't? Yeah. And then like my last like three months of college, I was like, I get it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I understand. Yeah. And then, of course, you have to leave. That seems yeah, to be the process. It's 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 funny. We were I was talking with um, Georgia Strange mm-hmm. about um, we. She was talking about the the third year students mm-hmm. and like where their head is at and how. Um, I for I I won't be able to explain this because I don't remember like the what they were called. Exactly. But <clears throat> there's these pots that she was talking about, some mm-hmm. kind of like ritual vessels where um, they have paintings, like, so there's a vessel, I'm not gonna be able to do this, but anyway, <laughs> but, um, so the bottom of the vessel, it has like a hole in it because mm-hmm. it's like the spirit has released or something, mm-hmm. like they, um, and then they have like these paintings of of people where like their heads are like springing off of them and she's like that's what this is where like the thesis people are at right mm-hmm. now like their heads are kind of springing off of them mm-hmm. and like they're just like in this weird space well yeah where you're giving your everything to mm-hmm. it but you're just totally overwhelmed yeah. and, the, and there's a certain point where like you there's only one direction and no matter what you're going through you have to stay yeah, on that stay track like <laughs> So, like, you have to kind of leave yourself right. for the work in a way. Mm. I don't know. I, it, it's, like, that's kind of terrifying. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty terrifying. Yeah. I would agree that that's, that's pretty terrifying. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, that pretty much covers my one big question. I'm, I'm always interested in what people have, you know, the responses that I've been getting because they've been so different, like so different and yeah. like so similar <laughs> in like really weird ways. Really? Yeah, similar? yeah. There've been a lot of very interesting similarities, and you know, I've talked to people at different points in their careers too at this point in time. Yeah. And so. Yeah. To see Some how. Yeah. And mm-hmm. And pa- Patrick is a second year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you know, he's been. He's got to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> He's one of those lucky, privileged ones who, like, knows what's going on, but he also doesn't have the pressure of, like, producing a thesis yeah. exit show yeah. right now. I want to... And it's funny how, like, the semester is breakdown, too. Mm-hmm. Like, third years in their first semester, there's, like, not as much pressure, but, like, you're making something that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, gosh, now I have to show this to the world. Yeah. Or, or prove this. Or, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. It's just, just it's sort of so different. I think the MFA experience. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it was really funny being in North Carolina at this show, mm-hmm. and you know, it's not academia. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's not grad school. It's this is like a a, a gallery with like. Creator who's like all about what's going on in a gallery. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> and then like real people that aren't students or maybe are are visiting and you know. But your main audience is not your peers. Yeah, your main. It's a whole different conversation. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> it's just really funny to like go through that and mm-hmm. then like come back to this. It's like this formula, you know, and yeah, even, totally. like your conversations are like a formula, mm-hmm. and like your work is like a formula, mm-hmm. and your everything is like a formula. Pedagogy is, is yep. the, a formula. the institution of the academy. <clears throat> I don't know. It's it's really it, it changes everything. But it was interesting to be in like in that gallery where someone can walk in and, and be like, are you, what what's else? going on here? Are <laughs> yeah, you a part to, of this? To kind of step out into well. the real world. I think that's one of the really great things that MFAs can do is that they can take their work to outside shows yeah. and, and have these couple of days where they just mm-hmm. get away from yeah. the like kind of system that you've been living in and working in where it's the same questions and conversations mm-hmm. and have this like maybe terrifying, maybe refreshing moment of 
Yeah. Outside it's, it's perspective. Kind of ter- it's kind of, I don't know. The whole thing is kind of terrifying in a way, but then exciting. Mm-hmm. But, um, I don't know. It's funny because whenever you're showing something, it's usually something that you made, like, at least a year ago. Because yeah. Because it takes a lot of planning. And, and then, and then, and... In school, you know, you're expected to be making all this progress and mm-hmm. all these changes. Turn something around within yeah. 15 weeks. So, like, yeah, it's helpful to show, but then it's, like, something that you made, like, you're in a different headspace. You have to, like, go all the way back to whenever you made that. Because, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, like, you just have to be, like, everything is so in the present. Like, whenever, mm-hmm. like everything's new, change now, and be in a different place. and. Mm-hmm. And then you have to, like, go back to, I don't know. Where you have been. I don't know. It's just weird. Cause, I mean, it's nice to show because you get to experience, like, the real world. Right. <laughs> but then it's like, but you're expected to be in this other world. <laughs> yeah, but, it's a very, I mean, I, I feel like grad school is this very liminal space where you're not part of the real world. Yeah. But you're, like, intrigued to be part of the real world. Yeah. But you're not part of, like, the young person world anymore, either. Yeah. Like, you're in this, like, weird semi-professional really environment. Where I mean, it's, like, exciting because, like, there's all these possibilities. <laughs> mm-hmm. or, you know, it's true experimentation mm-hmm. only happens in the academia or something. You know, like, right. I don't know. Whatever. Or whatever. Um, but... It's like you're so excited to be there, but you just can't wait to leave. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> it's like the most love-hate relationship. Yeah. Ever some days it's great, and some days it's terrible. <laughs> this is becoming a very, like, melodramatic. I know, it is very <laughs> I don't know, but, yeah. It, it, <clears throat> but, I mean, it has been, like, one of those... It, it's, I feel like I'm in one of these radical change processes right now where I don't yeah. want to acknowledge that it's happening some yeah. days. Like, I don't want to think about the fact that, like, I'm having to ask myself these questions about who I want to be and what my yeah. future is going to be, and I don't know. <laughs> Can I ask you what your radical change is? My radical change? <laughs> um, it's the same one I kind of brought up in class, but yeah. it, it was this experience of, um, like, I was able to narrow it down to the, probably the biggest moment of radical change yeah. for me, which was um, my first time um, experiencing contact improvisation which is right, yeah. um, this improvisational form of dance that involves body weight sharing mm-hmm. and you usually go in and you don't know who your partner is and it's just like almost like sense of instant intimacy and trust yeah. and you throw away all sense of training and the idea is just to be really inside your own body and to be really aware of the other person around you and yeah. I have like a lot of hang-ups in terms of like what my body's ability to move and do and be creative actually are and that was a moment where I was able to like let go of everything and it was incredible to realize that I could do that and though I still struggle with a lot of the same things I I can kind of go back to that same space again and let go at times and in a way doing that in dance kind of helped me to try and find a way to do that in a lot of other areas of my life I mean, it's still like a constant yeah. attempt to achieve that go, kind of like of peace with the way that things are. But yeah, um, yeah it was. It had a lot to do with just acceptance yeah. uh, of a lot of things, and that was like the key moment. So that's really yeah. No, that's really awesome. I could maybe relate to that in mm-hmm. some ways, or like understand that feeling. Um, like I used to be a musician, mm-hmm. and like I never. And I, I always, like, like I loved playing and performing. Yeah. So, like, I, um, I never got to that improv state. And I, and I always, yeah. that always kind of, like, upset me. Like, I had really good technical skills. Mm-hmm. And I, I could sight read and I could, yep. I had all these things. But, like, I played just, flute for eight years and mm-hmm. totally understand and what you why, mean. I think that's why I left it. Because I just never had the opportunity. You never to, like, wriggle it. Yeah, not that I, I mean, I just, I don't know, there's so many pressures, and, like, that's just where I was at, mm-hmm. was, or what I was, you know, required, mm-hmm. was not that, and I think that's why it didn't, I didn't hold on to it, yeah, so I was like, this is kind of a dead end. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm really thankful that I, I found 
that in myself because yeah. I don't know. That's I would have had a very tough time going forward with it because though I'm not doing it professionally, like making a living off of it, dancing is like maybe yeah. that kind of keeps me sane. Yeah. Hey. So, hey, we're finishing up our interview, but yeah. yeah. So, and we presenters are more cookies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I cookies. Can I have one of those? Yeah. <laughs>